Hello and welcome to a Talmud Israeli production. Today we will review the highlights of this week's course of Daf Yomi study, Masechet Erevin, pages 84 through 90. Edal Tzutzad. 84. Anshei Chatzer ve'anshei Aliyah, people live on the lower level of a courtyard, and they live on the upper level of a courtyard, she'shachachu v'lo ervu, and they did not make a joint eruv, they forgot. So what happens then? Anshei Chatzer, mishtam shin basar if they have a joint wall, the question is, to which group, the lower level or the upper level, do we ascribe rights to use the wall? Well, the Gemara tells us that for the lower ten tzvachim of that wall, it is ascribed to the Anshei Chatzer, whereas the upper ten tzvachim is ascribed to the Anshei Aliyah, the people who live upstairs. Kate said, what's an example of this? Ziz yotzei Kotel. If there's a protrusion, a ziz, that protrudes from the wall, Lamata me'asar l'chatzer, if it is situated less than ten tzvachim from the ground level, we will give it to the people of the chatzer on the lower level. Ulamala me'asar l'aliyah, and if it's higher than ten, we'll give it to the people who live upstairs in the aliyah. Hey, hey, 85. Shnei batim, mishnei tzidei b'shut What happens if you have two houses on opposite sides of a street, a public thoroughfare? Amar Rav, Rav tells us, Asur lizrok mizelizeh, you're not allowed to throw a ball, for example, from one house to the other, traversing the airspace above the public domain. Shmuel says you're allowed to throw that ball. What is the reason for Rav's uh, prohibition? After all, the item in question is going from a private domain to a private domain via an exempt space. Well, the Gemara says the reason why Rav forbade was because midli chad the, t- the altitude of the two houses is not the same. One is higher up than the other. Zimnin demegandar v'nafilati latuye, that it's possible that the person throwing the ball from one house to the other will miss the mark, won't throw it high enough, and the ball will land in the public thoroughfare. And then someone, maybe a child, maybe an adult, will want to go and grab that item that was thrown, the ball, and carry it back into the house. And then they'd be guilty of carrying the public domain. So to prevent that scenario, Rav disallowed the throwing from one house to another. Hey, Vav, 86. Ha-machat, it was once an incident, where a community had a Sefer Torah, a Torah scroll, in a certain house, and it had a synagogue, but the Torah was not in the synagogue. But they wanted to read the Torah on Shabbat, and they needed to bring the Torah from that house to the synagogue. Problem is, they don't have a legitimate way of doing so. Carrying is forbidden in the courtyard. What solution could they possibly have? Well, Persus Sadin al Hamudim, they took sheets and they strung them up on poles and created a corridor, an enclosed corridor, between the house and the synagogue. They view Sefer Torah of a Karubo, and they carried the Torah and read in the shul. The Gemara then asks, incredulously, how could they do such a thing? After all, you're not allowed to create even a temporary structure on Shabbat. You're not allowed to make on a Sabbath. Ella, rather, what must have happened? Matzah Sedim Perusim al they found this setup with the, the sheets strung up on poles already in advance. They did not create it on the Sabbath, it was already there. And having seen it, they took advantage of it, and they carried the Torah and read the Torah in the synagogue. Hey, Zion. Mishnah tells us, Gezustera, a balcony, which is hanging above a, the water. In Malin Amen of a Shabbat, you're not allowed to draw water from uh, that source via the balcony on the Shabbat. Elaim Kane, unless, Asula Machitza, Gavoa Sarat Vachim, unless you create partitions uh, through which you're going to drop the bucket into the water source, and these partitions have to be ten tzvachim in height. However, ben milamala, ben milamata, these partitions can exist whether above the level of the floor of the, the, of the balcony or below the level of the floor of the balcony. They could either be going upwards as a sort of a railing uh, for people on the balcony, or they could be extending downward. On what basis do we say that those partitions are going to extend all the way to the water level and thus justify drawing water from that water source? The answer is, good achit mechitzta alamayim, that we will use the principle of good achit, that will extend the, bound, the, the partitions downward. Pechet, 88. Tanya, the Brighter tells us, Mista pegadam ba'aluntin, a person could dry himself off with a towel, umanicha bachalon, and put it on the window. So if a person is in a bathhouse and is bathing in cold water, because bathing in cold water is technically permitted on the Shabbat, bathing in hot water is forbidden, but if you're bathing in cold water at the bathhouse, you could leave the towel by the stall, 
but you shouldn't give it to the bathhouse attendant because they are suspected of doing a malacha of schita, of wringing out the towel. Rabbi Shimon says, You could even bring the towel home. Why? Because we're not concerned that you're going to be guilty of schita. Pei Tet, 89. The question here is regarding roofs, roofs owned by different people. And can you carry from one roof to another? You're not allowed to carry any more than four cubits on these roofs. Where Shmuel says you're allowed to carry across the whole area of the many roofs. Everyone agrees that if there are obvious partitions separating the various rooftops owned by different people, then you could carry across the whole rooftop of any individual rooftop. Kipligi, where the machloket of Rav and Shmuel exists, is mechitzot and nikarot, where there are no obvious divisions between one rooftop and another. It's an open space uh, with no clear demarcation. Rav says we would, we would do not extend the partitions upward from the building, where Shmuel says we do extend the partitions upward from the building, and thus allowing carrying across the entirety of one rooftop. Sadi, 90. Sfina, if you have a boat, and this boat is a big boat, it has a deck which is larger than Beit Sa'atayim, the size of two sa'a, which is the size of a carpe. Mut Rav Amar Mut Lakula. Rav says, you're allowed to carry across the entire deck of the boat. Where Shmuel says, no, no, you can only carry in four, four cubits worth. You cannot carry the, across the whole deck of the boat. Rav Amar Mut So Rav says, you're allowed to. Why? Because after all, this boat has mechitzot as partitions all around the sides. Shmuel Amar Asur, where Shmuel forbids. Why? Because those partitions do not exist for residential purposes, but rather they exist merely to push away the water, to make sure the boat doesn't, doesn't flood and sink. So since the partitions do not exist for residential purposes, uh, this boat cannot be permitted for carrying. Everyone have a great week.